Welcome everyone to my core workout on the floor. I'm Jennifer Wagner with Collective Wellness. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on that little button there that says subscribe. That's free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, that way you just get my notifications every time I post a new session. I do short videos and long sessions also. Um, we're going to be on the floor the whole time. No equipment is required. Please listen to your body. Um, this is going to be a challenging exercise, but um, I will give you those modifications. Uh, so listen to the form and then, of course, the modifications when needed. So we're going to start on our hands and knees because we're going to warm up the spine first. So hands and knees, we're going to go into cat cow. So fingers spread, crease your elbows are straight forward and then plant your tops of your feet into the floor for a little bit of a base. We're gonna take a deep breath in and then exhale into a cat pose. Tailbone under, chin is under, pressing your spine to the sky. And then you're gonna lower down, inhale into cow, tailbone out, chin is out. All right, we're gonna go back and forth between the two poses. One fluid movement from your tailbone to the top of your head. So cow, tailbone out, chin is out. And then cat, chin is tucked, tailbone under. Good, we're just gonna go in and out. Warming up through the spine. Couple more times. Back into cow and finishing off. Good. All right, sitting back. We're going to do a plank hover series. You have a couple options to keep in mind. Um, you could always make a fist. So when you're up on your arms, you can have your shoulders and hands stacked with the fist. Of course, here's your regular um, for the hands. And then you can be down on your elbows. Elbows are below the shoulders and then your forearms are parallel with each other versus in. We don't wanna rotate our shoulders in. The other option is no knees or one knee or two knees. Now, if you notice that my hips did not change, I'm not sticking my booty out, which is what a lot of people do. And as soon as you do that, um, you're gonna change focus and either not work your abs or you're gonna work your hip flexors more if you stick your booty out. All right, so let's go ahead and pick your position that you're going to be in. I'm gonna start in a regular plank. Shoulders above the hands, hips are straight. I want you to come up and out of your shoulder blades. That's a very common thing and the neck is long and then press your heels back. Again, at any time you need to come down into the hover where you're on your forearms, you can make a fist too. I want you to pull your abdominals in and hold towards your rib cage. Keep breathing. I'm already shaky. <laughs> From the first workout I did this morning. If you have to lower a knee or two, that's fine too. Holding, keep holding. Good, lower both knees. Sit back and extend a child's pose for a little break. If you were on your hands, you could always flip your hands and give your wrists a break too. Good. All right, you're going to come back into position. So you can still be on your hands and knee, uh, and your feet if you want. I'm going to lower down to a hover. So your forearms are parallel with each other. Palms are down. Elbows are stacked with the shoulders. Go ahead and get in position of what you want to do. And then we're going to add a twist. Now it's through the waist. Your shoulders are in place and your feet are in place. And we're not rocking side to side, it's just a twist. And we're activating our obliques. Keep breathing. Hovers and planks are great because they work everything at the same time. We're just emphasizing the obliques right now. 
could always lower a knee or two if needed. Those are options. Just make sure the hips stay in that straight line. Keep going. Make sure we're not sinking into the shoulders or pushing forward. All right, rest of the hips to the floor. Come to your elbows if you're not on your elbows yet. And then just extend the chest out and up. Feel that through the abs. Little tiny mini stretch. Good. Okay, arms extended. We're gonna get into the lower back here while we're on our stomach still. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Coming up and then down. Your neck is long. It's your chest and your thigh that are lifting. It's not the hands and the feet, even though they do come up off the floor. The focus I want you to do to have is from the chest and the thighs, and that will help activate your lower back. Your rectus spinae muscles. And you might feel this in the tush and the hamstrings too a little bit, but I do want you to feel this right through the lower back. All right, you can go ahead and stay with this position, opposite arm, opposite leg. We're gonna advance to both arms and legs and down. Nice and controlled, extend the toes and fingertips. Your neck is long, so your chin is slightly tucked. Now we're gonna go on to the next step from here. You're gonna come up, feet are wide as you pull your elbows back, extending straight out and then lower back down. Up, feet are wide, pulling back, feet back together and extend again. Now you have the three different positions that you can work with, go with it to what works for you. I want you to challenge yourself, but actually not hurt yourself. So listen to your body. Let's do this one more time. Good, and lower down. All right, you're going to sit back into child's pose. So a little stretch, counter pose for the spine, arms down by your sides as you curl yourself into a ball. Just let your tailbone drop as you feel that stretch in your lower back. Should feel really good. If you need to, you could always stack your fist and rest your forehead down on your fist. Inhale and exhale. All right, bring your head up. We're going to go onto our back. So walk yourself out and then flip on over. We're going to do the bicycle. And I am going to transition you through this pose because. It is done incorrectly so often where we think it's our elbows that are working, but it's not. So go ahead and come down onto your back. Knees are bent, feet are flat. You're gonna take your fingertips and you're gonna place them right behind your ears, not behind your head, just behind your ears. And then elbows are out. You barely should see your elbows in your peripheral vision. So you're gonna lift your shoulder blades up off the floor. Your chin is away from your chest, so relax your neck. You're going to take your right shoulder, lift it up and across the center. So your shoulder blades are still off the floor. Now left shoulder up and over and center. So the elbows never actually come in. And it's a little movement. A lot of times we think bicycles are big movements, but not necessarily because our elbows, go ahead, just go rotate side to side. Let's do one more each. Good, and down. All right, we're gonna add the legs in. So feet up off the floor. Let's start with just the legs. So your head resting on the floor and we're just extending one leg and then bringing the other knee in. Now what's gonna happen is that the shoulder is gonna go towards the opposite knee, the one that's coming in, the knee that's coming in but I want you to control through the legs. Good. All right, bring both knees together. Lift your shoulder blades off the floor again, chin away from your chest. Let's go ahead and bring your right knee in 
and left shoulder crosses over. Center, switch leg, or bring your knees back together. Now switch again, left knee in, right shoulder crosses. Center, all right, now let's speed it up just a little bit more. We're not, we're gonna take that center part out. Again, your elbows are out, it's your shoulder that's going towards that knee. Good. Nice and control. There are different versions we can do here, but we're just doing this one today. One more each. And down. Whew. Full body stretch. Extending through your toes and fingertips. Reaching as far as you can. Feel that elongate right here. All right, we're gonna squeeze one more exercise in. We're gonna squeeze bridges in. So bring your feet back in, tuck the heels towards the tush, arms down by your sides, shoulder blades resting on the floor. We're gonna lift those hips up, keeping your knees in. So you activate your inner thighs. All right, we're gonna go up and down without resting your hips on the floor. They might brush the floor, especially depending on how much you got back there, but I want you to not rest the hips. You're just going up and down, heels pressing into the floor. Feel that through your lower back. You can probably feel that in the tush also. All right, you're gonna come up and hold. Support is in the shoulder blades, not your neck. Let's pulse up, pulsing up. Keeping your abs in check still. Inhale and exhale. Four, three, two, and down. Good job. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Grab hold of underneath those knees and pull in. I'm just gonna hang out here for a moment. We need to stretch out that lower back. So we always want to make sure we stretch those muscles out after we've used them. Because when you're contracting those muscles, those muscle fibers shorten. We want to elongate those muscles back out. Go ahead and rock side to side. Feel that in the hips and the lower back. All right, place your feet on the floor, turn yourself to the side and push yourself up into a seated position. <sighs> Crisscross those legs comfortably before, stay with me, because we're almost done. We're gonna just rock our head side to side. We don't realize that how much we tense our shoulders and neck when we're doing core. So we're just gonna like loosen them back up and then turn your head side to side. Looking over your shoulder. And to the front, deep breath in. And exhale. Let's do that one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe, that little picture of me there. Um, I'll have another video there for you uh, for stretching if you need a little more stretching. And then please leave those comments, suggestions. I like to hear those. And then of course, thumbs up. Have a wonderful day. Take care.